when we talked about it, was there any more impressive team at AT and T Stadium? Maybe Lake Travis. Uh, yeah, but this but is, th- this at, is the the very, right at the very at the very worst, tied for second. Yeah. The three A Division two state champion Gunner Tigers, and here to talk about it is the state champion head coach of those Gunner Tigers. It's Coach Jake Fazell. Coach, how are you? Doing great, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, congratulations. Um, I guess first and foremost, has it sunk in yet? Has the whole uh, enormity of what just happened <laughs> sunk in? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think it's definitely sunk in, but it is just, uh, we've definitely been on cloud nine here in Gunner, Texas, that's for sure. I, I, I can certainly imagine the little town of Gunner was, uh, was, <laughs> was partying. Uh, oh, man, no doubt. You guys, uh, I, I want to talk to you. We've talked, I talked on, on Fox Sports Southwest about, we talked about on the show today, the game plan that you guys came up for against bowling was so pitch perfect. It was a master class. I want to ask you, going into that game, watching film on what was a really athletic, really talented bowling team, what did you see, what were, what were to you, were the things that you were able to, to do out there against bowling? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, Coach Castorine, our defense coordinator, just does an awesome job every week. And uh, he did another exceptional job, you know, the state championship week of coming up with a great game plan. And basically, we just, we when we broke them down, we, we figured out that, uh, you know, there are two main plays and, and uh, we just went into it and, and knew personnel wise, just when they had, you know, when they had per- certain people on the field, uh, on the field at the same time, you know, what those plays were going to be. And, uh, you know, we knew that we were going to have to attack their blocks behind the line of scrimmage. And the big deal for us is we told their kids we've got to get their runners lateral mm-hmm. and uh, make them go east and west. And our kids just did a fantastic job of doing it and and uh, just uh, really proud of them. Yeah, I mean, that, I think you're, you're exactly right. Because if you get those kids going downhill, I mean, you, got, I mean, you guys were giving up 25, 30 pounds a man. I mean, you guys yeah. were the smaller team out there. So, so I, I imagine that from a defensive standpoint, you couldn't be more pleased with how things went. Oh, no doubt. You know, our kids play with uh, really good leverage and, and, and they, you know, they play low. We, we've got some quickness, you know, mm-hmm. on our defense too. And that's, we really played to that and, and I told her, you know, just, just really harped on them all week. We've got to get inside those blocks and spill the ball the outside and get the ball out to our, to our secondary and our linebackers. And, and uh, that's what we did. And, and they, you know, they did a fantastic job of, uh, you know, our second and third level players coming up and, and making uh, tackles in space. And I think that's really what, what won the ball game for us. For sure. And and I want to ask you now, um, you've had you, – you've been a gunner for 10 years. You've had good teams. You've had – you know, yep. you've had really good teams. When did you know that this team was special? You know, the, the first ball game of the year, we went out and we beat uh, – Howe, mm-hmm. who was a really good team the year before and had a lot of people coming back. And about the third quarter of that Howe game, I looked around at some of our coaches. I was like, man, we're pretty good. And um, and we thought we were going to be good, too, obviously. And But that's about the time I thought, man, we've, we've got a really good football team here. So um, it was really the first ball game. And then after that, we just kind of continued to get better and better. And um, really – I say sometime in the playoffs too. I think we just hit an, hit another gear, mm-hmm. and um, I think we had to, to to beat a team like Canadian. You know, in the fifth round, that was that was a huge win, and uh, that kind of propelled us and gave us a lot of confidence going to that state championship game. Sure, and and I w- do you feel like because uh, there there were teams that were undefeated going into the state championship games, the Woodlands, for example. But we've been talking about the Woodlands all year. I mean, d- yeah. from a statewide perspective. If you're undefeated at about 10 and 0, 11 and 0, 12 and 0 is when people start to take notice. It feels like from my perspective that you guys flew under the radar all year long. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like you guys uh you, you know maybe kind of glided under that radar? I don't know. I mean, I, I you know probably uh, of course we've got a lot of, you know, publicity around our little area in the mm-hmm. Texoma area from some from our local papers and mm-hmm. and uh media and all that kind of stuff, but probably statewide you're right. That's I mean, probably has something to do with the fact that you know, we've never we've never done it before. You know, never been there before. So, um, obviously, now we we've kind of proved to uh, you know the rest of the state, but also to ourselves that you know we can do it and we can we can be in there and we can win a state championship. And you know, it's a uh, everything just kind of lined up for us this year, and uh, it was a special year. So, hopefully, we can go back to work in January and 
and uh, work on another one. All right. Now I'm gonna. We're talking with Jake Fizell, the head coach of the Gunner Tigers, here on DCTF Live. Get involved with the conversation. Hashtag DCTF Live, Coach. I'm gonna tattle on you here for a moment because okay. I have I have your questionnaire here <laughs> from the 2016 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. We sent a questionnaire to every coach in the state yep. to get a lot of the information. <laughs> and here uh, we ask you to predict your district's finish. Yeah, yeah. And where are the Gunner Tigers? Not first. Not even second. Wow. You predicted your <laughs> own team third in district. So my question is, and this happens, we have you coaches doing my me. question my question is, were you sandbagging us? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I'll probably <laughs> I'll probably I'll probably predict this fourth next year. I'm probably the I'm probably the worst person to ask about our own team because I'm always gonna I'm I'm always gonna I'm always gonna put us down there probably a lot further than we're, we're supposed to be, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a little sandbag. We going on listen. There. This happens. We get this all the time. There, yeah. there are two type. There are two, two types, types of, of coaches. coaches. Absolutely. There's coaches. There's coaches who are who who want to establish their own. Like be like, hey, yeah, we want the target. We want yeah. it. And there's yeah. others yeah. who are like, we're really good, but we're gonna tell everybody that yeah. we're pretty, we're okay. Yeah. yeah. Now we know where you fall, coach. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend all spring telling people how bad we're gonna. <laughs> That's, hey, it works for you exactly. I want to I want to give you an, an opportunity to uh, to brag on some of your kids. One of the one of the kids who who's getting a lot of accolades right now is, is your running back Colson Stovall, who was Absolutely. just yep. tremendous, an outstanding gutty game for him as the guy who who got to see him week in and week out. What can you tell us about Colson Stovall? Man, just a uh, unbelievable. He had an unbelievable year, you know, all year long, and uh, like you said, gritty, tough, hard nosed. You know, you can. You can go on and on with uh, adjectives about him just like that. He's a uh, just an unbelievable player and had an unbelievable year. You know, he's a kid. Last year we were kind of – we were in a spread system, and mm-hmm. he was playing like a slot receiver for us. And really we had him we had him out of position. And um, when we were looking for an offense to – that kind of fit, fit our kids a little bit better, uh, one of the reasons we really liked this offense, we went out to – you know, we went out to Permian to Blake Felt and visited those guys is because of is because of Colson. Mm-hmm. We just felt like he was going to be that, um, you know that that we call it the tailback, but that fullback position that you needed in that Veer offense, and and uh, he really came through for us. And yeah, there's no way we don't win a state championship without a without a running back like Stovall this year. He did an unbelievable job. Coach, before we move on to your other guys, I, I want to. This is kind of a where we are football nerds here. Mm-hmm. I want to follow up on that. You guys made this change with the offense, this this running game out of the shotgun, pistol look, veer look. Mm-hmm. There's a lot you're doing here. Why? You know, you talked about why it works for Colson, but why was it the right change for you guys? Because not a lot of teams are running this right now, but the teams that are, we're seeing a lot of success with. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, for us, it just fit our kids that we felt like we we have linemen that are going to be, you know, right around. 190 to 210 pounds generally every year uh we've got kids that are have pretty good quickness but we're not going to just have huge kids every year and and um we're generally going to have a quarterback that's going to be a good athlete and and trey could you know trey could throw it a lot better and we probably let him uh this year but um you know but generally we're going to have quarterbacks up and down the line from seventh grade up that are good athletes but not you know they may or may not be able to throw great so we just wanted to put ourselves or put our kids in a system to where you know we felt like we could kind of piece athletes together and and uh, uh, still be able to spread the ball, still be able to get the ball in the perimeter, you know, in the in the passing game and you know in the run game fairly easily, but also be able to attack the a gap as well. So uh, it's just a good fit for us. We feel like you mentioned him, your your outstanding signal caller Trey Carr, and I told Max this that for all the accolades because of the numbers that he put up, Colson Stovall uh, is getting. Boy, I feel like I feel like they should go to Trey Carr as well. I mean, oh, yeah. the guy, yeah. the guy. I was so impressed with right decision after right yep. decision after right decision. And there's a lot of ways to screw that up, and he yep. did none of them. What What can you tell us about Trey Carr? Well, I think if Colson's probably the, uh, uh, I don't know the the muscles of our offense, I guess you could say, or something like that. Trey's like the heartbeat. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he is uh, he makes it go and. Um, you know, and some of the things I was it was it was it was it was fun for me to watch that telecast of the game, go back and watch it, because there's a lot of things that I don't see. You know, close ups. You know, they're showing close up close ups of our kids in the huddle, and there's a lot of times Trey is just talking to all of them. You know, Trey's talking to the linemen. He's talking to the, you know, he's talking to uh, Colson out there, making little adjustments during the game. Just, you know, uh, just just communicating with our kids, and our kids follow him and they listen to him and. 
And, um, you know, I was telling our coaches this past week, I was like, man, that's that right there is what, you know, hopefully we're going to have a, a, you know, a kid step up and be a quarterback, but that's what we're going to miss so much out of Trey is just that leadership ability on the field. And, uh, he never thinks he's out of the fight. He's always going to, his toughness is, 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 uh, unbelievable. And, um, you know, that's, that's really where we're going to, we're going to miss so much out of him is just that on the field leadership. We're talking with Jake Fazell, the head coach of the 3A Division II state champion Gunner Tigers here on DCTF Live. Get involved with the conversation at hashtag DCTF Live. Get used to hearing that, Coach. Get used to hearing 3A Division II state champion Gunner <sighs> no Tigers. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll get real sick of it. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do want to ask you one more question before we let you go. Get on to, get on to more important things like, uh, like playing in the parade. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was the party like? The Gunner's a small town. Uh, they were all there at AT&T Stadium. Yeah. Uh, yep. When you guys got home and, and throughout the weekend, what's the party like been in been in Gunner, Texas? Oh, uh, the uh, the drive home was just unbelievable. We, you know, going to going home to Gunner when you get off uh, get off the highway, you go through Prosper and then Salina and then up to Gunner, mm-hmm. and there's about four or five cop cars that met us in, in Prosper, Prosper Police that that led us through led us through Prosper, stopping all the stoplights. Uh, just ha- you know, we had three buses with us in the trailer, and they just they were uh, had a caravan of cops all around us. And then the the Salina cops picked us up going through Salina, <laughs> and then the Gunner cops picked us up going into Gunner. They had a fire truck uh, with water uh, spraying <laughs> a fire hose as we were walking going into the parking lot. The whole town was there in the parking lot. It was it was an unbelievable moment, you know, for our kids. And I think that's you know the biggest thing about winning a state championship is. Obviously, our players, our cheerleaders, the the kids, yeah. and you know the band, you know that's a special moment. But it just brought our community together like uh, like nothing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So, you know that's the that's the the thing that you know high school football, as you guys know in the state of Texas, it's just, um, I mean it just weaves the the fabric of a community, and and it just it's a it's a it's a special sport, and it's it's a lot of fun to be a part of. And it was a special team, the three A Division Two yes. state champion. Absolutely. Gunner Tigers, then their head coach, Jake Fizzell. Coach, appreciate your time. Again, congratulations, and uh, and don't don't start focusing on 2017 yet. Like, so let, let this <laughs> one another let, week or two. Let this one simmer yeah. for a, for a minute. I'll give myself one week, and then uh, next week we're gonna start playing in January. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, coach. Appreciate your time, and uh, and again, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. There he goes, Jake Fizzell, the head coach of the Gunner Tigers. Uh, man, I mean, look. You know, I knew that they had gone to a different offense. Right. And, like, you talk about installing an offense in one year and having it just humming. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, it, like I said, it's it's a special offense. We don't see a lot of it right now, but the teams that are running it, holy cow. And uh, and they're one of them. It's, it's really impressive. 